hello everyone yes i'm back again with another tutorial where we'll be learning how to make this detachable zaria cap which has a braided headband and crinoline embellishment on it this tutorial was requested for and i'm so glad that i was finally able to work on it to all our new viewers who are just joining us for the first time you are welcome please before leaving kindly do what to subscribe to our youtube channel and also click on the bell icon to so all our old subscribers i hope you are getting value from the tutorials that we have been uploading now the materials used include certain fabric of which i use doll face material mako mako can be gotten from those who sell shoe making or bag making materials your fiber which can also be gotten from those who sell carpentry materials and then we have the big size of crinoline of which you'll be needing about seven yards or less depending on how free you want your design to be and then we also have our scissors a measuring tape and matching color of thread and needle we're working on a headband design it's a braided headband design like the design it's braided we have the satin fabric for the outer look and for the inner part i'm padding it and for my padding i'm making use of fiber then coming down to the back we have the crinoline design yes there is this um pleated crinoline design and there is this other round crinoline design joined together to give both the design now this design is detachable you can wear it alone or you can also decide to make a zaria cap separate and wear it or create um this men's cap a willow cap and wear it on it or make a tuban cap and wear it in addition with your tuban cap so that depends on your preference or that of your client now i've gone ahead to cut out my fabrics or first i'll start first with the zaria cap the detachable zaria cap and as soon as we are done with that tutorial i'll go ahead to proceed with the tutorial for the braided headband and crinoline design my zaria cap i have my fabric cut out already i'm using 25 inches for the length which is the head circumference and 18 inches for the width so this is my fabric 25 by 18 inches. It's a satin fabric. You can try to double your fabric. Try to um, have a bit of weight. You can try to use a single fabric. For this project, I'm using a single fabric. Now, in addition to this, we'll also be needing marker. And for my marker, I'm using 2.5 inches for the width by 18 inches for the length. 2.5 by 18 inches. I've cut it out. Now, I'm going to go ahead to fold my marker into two equal halves. You either make a notch at the middle of the marker or you use your chalk to mark it out. So this is the midpoint. I repeat the same thing for the other side. So this is it. Now, as soon as that is done, I'll get the fabric for... The fabric for my cap and then I'll fold it into two equal halves and make a notch at the middle as well now that that has been done I'll open up my fabric with the wrong side facing me this is the wrong side of my fabric facing me I'll get my marker and ensure that the midpoint of the marker aligns with the midpoint of the fabric then I'm going to go ahead to fold this down a bit. I'll fold it in and then bring this down. Okay, I'm going to place this on my sewing machine. I'll stitch down this edge, stitch down this edge, then go ahead to stitch from this end of the fabric down to the other edge. I have to stitch, I have to fold in this edge to hide that frame edge, and I have to stitch close to the edge of the marker so that this side is pulled. This edge is pulled in tight. I'm going to go back to sew this and then I'll get back. So this is my fabric. As you can see, I've sewn down this edge. I've also sewn down this edge. And I've sewn it down from this end to the other end. Now I'll fold my fabric into two. This way. 
I'm going ahead to sew it from the band down to this edge and down to this very edge. Then I'll get right here. I have my two band cap already sewn. I'll sew it down from this edge from the band down to this end and down to this very end. So the next one I'm going to be working on is creating the running stitch that will be at the edge. For that, I'll be needing my needle and thread. Please ensure it is doubled. And then I'll start my running stitch immediately after the band. So I'll just be, um, pass my needle and thread in and out of the fabric until I get to the edge. Then I'll go ahead to pull and cut off the excess thread. Now, this is satin fabric and the edge is free. So the edge is free easily. I would I suggest that you ensure your fabric is weaved before you make your running stitches. So you weave your fabric the edges of your fabric before making your running stitches so as to secure the free edges. And then at the end of the day, after creating my running stitch, this is the wrong side. And I'll go ahead to turn it inside out. And I have my plain Zaria cap ready. You can go ahead and embellish it with any design of your choice. Now, for my headband, it is braided. So it will require three different pieces of fabric, of which I have here. Now, the measurement I'm using for mine for this tutorial is 4.5 inches for the width. Yes, the width is 4.5 inches. And for the length, I cut out 40 inches. Although it's going to be a little too big, at the end of the day, I'll cut off whatever um, excess fabric is left. Now, in addition to this fabric, for the back, there's going to be a loop that we're going to use to cover up the braiding after stitching down together. And I have it here. I have 8 inches for the width, and the length is 12 inches, 8 by 12 inches. In addition to that, I'll be needing my crinoline. I'm making use of the big size of crinoline, which is between 6 and 7 inches for the width. And I'm going to cut out two different um, sizes of crinoline. So I'll be cutting out 4 inches for the pleated crinoline. And then the second crinoline that I'm going to be wrapping, I'll be cutting out 3 inches. So I have 4 inches and 3 inches, which is a total of 7 inches. However, you can try to use something lesser. A lesser measurement or a bigger measurement it depends on how full or how bulky you want your design at the back to be so that is it now when it comes to the tutorial proper i'll get the first piece of my fabric for my that's this piece of fabric for the braiding i'm going to fold it into three core halves with the fine side inside and the wrong side outside i'll get this on my sewing machine and so from one end of the fabric to the other end. Now the same thing is applicable to the other piece of fabric that I left, including the fabric for the loop. Now I have my fabric for the loop. This is it. I'll fold it into two. The fine side will be inside and the wrong side will be outside. I'll stitch down from one end of the fabric down to the other end. Now after stitching my fabric, I'll go ahead to turn my fabric inside out and get back. In addition to the fabrics that I've stated earlier, I will also be needing fiber. I have my fiber here. I have three pieces of the three pieces of fabric and I've cut it out. I'm using two inches for the width and then the length of the fabric, two inches by 40 inches, cut that three times. And this is what we'll be using to part the design. I have my fabric here already sewn and turned inside out. I have my fiber. And then I'm going to go ahead to pass this my fiber inside my fabric from one end of the fabric to the other end. So I'm going to go back to do this. And as soon as I'm done, I'll come back for us to continue the tutorial. Now, I have all three pieces of fabric here. I'm done inserting my fiber inside. And this is it. So I'm going to pick it up one after the other. I'll pick it up one after the other. I'll get the other one. And the last one. Then I'm going to stitch all three. So I'm going to go ahead to stitch these three edges together. 
place one on each other I can sit down with my sewing machine or my needle and thread and then I'll get back so this is my sewing stitch at the end that is my needle and thread to tag this down to hold it in place then what we are going to be doing is we are going to be creating the braided design for this you can either place a every a heavy object at the edge of your fabric and go ahead to braid your design or better to get someone to help you hold down this edge while you braid now when it comes to braiding it's the normal way we braid our design okay that is like make braid like braid our hair and all that just the normal way there's no other pattern to it so i'll just start braiding it this way you can braid tightly more tightly or loosely depending on how you want it to be so this is it i'll just keep making my braid until i get to the end meanwhile i'm going to stop here and i'm going to get someone to assist me so that my braids can come out smaller and finer i just wanted to use this to illustrate to us about how to go about the braiding pattern so i have my fabric here i'm done making my braids and this is it i've gotten to the end so i'm going to go ahead to arrange it by placing one on each other and i'll get my handle and thread to help me tack this down I'm done closing this edge. You can see my needle and thread out from here. So I'm going to get both edges, place one on each other this way, and then use my needle and thread to tack it down. Okay, so I'm going to tack this down together. So I'll just start by passing my needle and thread in and out a couple of times until it is firm and secure. So this is it i'm done tacking down this edge this is my braided design this is this rough end now we're going to be covering this up with our loop fabric this is my loop fabric already soon so i'll go ahead to turn this inside out and then have the sewn part at the middle i'll get my braided design then i'm going to place it down this way okay and i'll place on my sewing machine and stitch this down so this is my ready sewn fabric and then i'll go ahead to turn it to the other side so as to have that sewn part at the middle hidden so after turning it inside out the other side this is it and this is this other side go okay, ahead to make unnecessary adjustment and i have my braided design here so I'll set this aside while we work on the crinoline design that will be added now, coming to over to my design, I have my crinoline here. The first one is 4 yards. We're using it to make the round pleated design. To start with, I'm going to secure the edges of my crinoline so as to prevent it from fraying further. So I'll gather this edge and then get my handle and thread and tack through it or tie it down. And then as soon as I'm done for this edge, I'm going to go back and also repeat the same thing for the other edge and then I'll get back. So as soon as this is done, this is the first edge. Both edges here. I'm going to now get my needle and thread. I'll be making a running stitch from one edge of the fabric down to the other edge. So I'll start from here and I'll start passing my needle and thread in and out this way until i get to the edge so i'll go back to complete this and as soon as i'm done i'll get back for us to continue at this point i've almost gotten to the edge so i'll just quickly finish this up and there you have it so i'll go ahead to pull my thread or pull it tightly then place one edge on each other and tack this down together to um, join both together okay so i'm going to tack it down together to join it fully and this is the first crinoline design Now, 
coming over to work on the second crinoline design. I'm going to fold it into three. I'll fold it in and then fold it again. Start afresh. I'll fold it in to the middle, then fold it down again. So that it becomes like this. Now, uh, I would advise that you get your iron, your electric iron, not iron, not very hot, but it should be hot enough to iron your crinoline. And then use it to iron your crinoline fabric from the beginning of the fabric to the end of the fabric. When you iron your fabric, it makes it, that is when you iron your crinoline, it makes it stiff and it makes it stay in place. And it gives the design a different outlook, different from when you use your crinoline without ironing it out. I can decide to fold my fabric this way and go ahead to create my design. Yes, you can do that. But then what you get, the outlook you get without ironing your crinoline, and when you iron your crinoline, there is difference, okay? And ironing your crinoline to create a design gives it a more professional outlook and it beautifies your design at the end of the day. So just get your iron and then iron it, fold it into three to get to the end of the fabric and you iron it until you get to the end. After ironing the fabric, you get back to continue with the tutorial. So I have my fabric here, I've ironed it and then I'll go ahead to create the design. To do that, I'll start wrapping my design. You can go ahead to gather this edge or apply gum at the tip so that it doesn't free. They will now start wrapping the design in a circular pattern. So this is it. And I will go again. As you will not fold it tightly. You will be given a little bit of allowance. Okay, this is it. You take it round again. You give it a little bit of allowance in that order. That is how you will keep going until you have made use, complete use of the entire crinoline which you have cut out. So this is it. So right here, I have my design. I finished wrapping it round. I went ahead to use my needle and thread to tack down this part here to join it together. And this is what I have. So that is it for this. So I have to join to the first crinoline design and to the braided design. So this is my first, this is my second crinoline design. I have the first crinoline design and I have my braided design here. So I'm going to couple all three together. So I'll start by tacking down this design down to this, or I'll go ahead to join this um, pleated design down to the back of my turban cap first. And then it's just stitching, you stitch in and out with your needle and thread. And then as soon as this has been tagged down, I'll come back to tag this at the back. So this is it. At this junction, I've tacked down this crinoline down to my design. This is it. And then I'm going to go ahead to get this second design. And I'll use my needle and thread to tack it down on it this way. At this junction, I'm done tacking down my design down to my crinoline and my braided design. You can go ahead to embellish with any accessory of your choice. So this is it. This is the wrong side. This is the fine side. And then you can try to wear this this way or try to wear it with a tuban cap or a zaria cap. So I have my zaria cap here and then I'll just place it inside this way now if you want to join the zaria cap and your design together you can make each one separately and then use your glue to glue it down together so as to join it together okay so this is it and it's good to go good to go good to go thank you so much for watching i've come to the end of today's tutorial i hope you love it and i hope you have learned something Please kindly do well to subscribe if you are yet to subscribe. Don't forget to like, don't forget to share and to leave a comment in the comment section. Please also follow us on our social media platforms where we are on Facebook and on Instagram as Jenny Concept. Until our next tutorial. Bye!